What's up you guys, it's Paul here from the 9 to Find Investors Club channel. In this video, I want to talk to you about how I am planning to invest in 2021 compared to 2020 and some key pointers that I think you should keep in mind, okay? Now, in my opinion, 2020 was actually a very easy year to invest in because the when we had the March crash back in 2020, every single stock was 50, 60, 80% off and it was like a Black Friday sale most of the year, okay? So almost any stock that people picked ended up doubling, tripling, or some have even 10 x without even people having to do a whole lot of research on the stock, without caring too much about the financials. There was a lot of short squeeze that was happening because people were still expecting a, a second bottom and people get buying puts or selling naked calls. And so to cover their positions, people started buying back their calls. And so there was just so much of short squeeze and uh, people taking advantage of the bottoms that stocks went absolutely crazy and almost any stock that you put money in other than the stocks uh, that have that have like in the travel industry or restaurant industry most of them did exceptionally well especially tech stocks okay now in my opinion 2021 will not be that easy because the valuations have been stretched like crazy on all tech stocks so we're already starting to see that happen today so many of the high flying stocks ha have come down quite a bit more a lot of them are up six 10 15 percent from the highs uh for example quantum scape as an example uh this was this was the stock was going absolutely crazy ever since their uh presentation came about about their uh, solid state uh, battery charging and people just went absolutely nuts like it shot up to as high as 132 dollars uh in a really really short time without any f real financials backing it okay so a lot of this speculative investing r helped people make profits and anyone who were able to uh, take their profits anywhere around here were able to get out of it. But if you continue thinking that, you know, just putting in a lot of money in a speculative stock, you're going to see it go up 100% or 200% easily or just buy call options on it. Be very careful because I think you'll hurt yourself a lot if you continue with that. Okay. So having said that, so I think this is a year where a lot of rotation starts becoming real because you know, tech stocks kept flying and people started taking their profits today and probably rest of the week, in my opinion, because maybe there's a good chance that people did not sell the high flying stocks, uh, especially the biggest funds, because they may not want to pay short term capital gains. OK, so a lot of them potentially waited until the first week of January to start taking their profits so they wouldn't they would at least have to pay long term gains instead of short term gains. OK, so that's one thing to keep in mind. And especially with Biden becoming the president, we already have the vaccine news. We got the second stimulus check, even though it was not $2,000. There's just so much good news already priced in that there's not a whole lot of new catalysts that you can think of that can keep uh, the stock market to keep going up like it has been. Okay, So that's another reason why I'm really thinking that the way to play 2021 would be a lot safer if you actually uh, focus more on ETFs than specific stocks. OK, so when it comes to ETFs, uh, I'm specifically talking even about uh, in terms of options, by the way, uh, as if you've been following my channel for a while, you know, I'm focused more on options than specifically just stocks themselves. So from a from an options perspective, I think if you keep chasing those high flying stocks, you will hurt yourself. So if you do want to trade options, I think the safer way to do it is to actually get uh, eat, actually by calls or spreads and ETFs because they're a lot less volatile. OK. So uh, our, our ETFs are some of my favorite ETFs. Our ARKK is, a, is one that I'm invested in, both in my retirement account. I even got calls on it recently. I got the Jula June 18th, uh, 15296 calls. It's fairly far out of the money, but I think ARK will continue outperforming the market. And over the next six months, if ARK can even go up by 15, 20%, which I think they easily can, then these calls are going to do really well, okay? So, you know, obviously the leading stock in uh, ARC that has made it outperform so much is actually Tesla. But if I start getting calls on Tesla, that's going to be a lot more tricky because they're already almost at a $700 billion market cap. And even though they're doing really well, it's just a lot more risky. The calls on them are a lot more expensive. So you can indirectly play Tesla by buying calls on ARKK. Okay. Way back in November, I did post some calls on ARKK that I ended up going 10x in just two months because the ARKK shot up about 20, 25% in a four to six week period. So that's kind of what I'm shooting for, not chasing those high flying stocks, sticking to ETFs because 
calls and ETFs are relatively cheap compared to uh, tech stocks, for example. And if the ETF tends to move a lot, like ARK Invest ETFs do, you're going to be a lot more profitable on your calls and even spreads. Okay, so uh, I'm focusing definitely going to focus on calls and spreads on ETFs. So ARKK was one example. Uh, I posted about ARKG uh, calls th today. I got the July 16th, 129.21 calls, just two of them at $600. They're up only 1% right now, but the reason I'm interested in it is because they did drop about 7% in the past week. And even from the all time highs, they went as high as a 106 and they dropped to 92. So I think this is definitely a good opportunity to get in on them. Even Kathy Wood herself is more bullish on genomic stocks than uh, the innovation ETF itself. So if she is more bullish on it compared to ARKK, I'm definitely more excited about ARKG, okay? Now, uh, another ETF that I've mentioned several times before is obviously TAN. You know, uh, th they're still at all-time highs again. I had I am still holding the April 110 calls. I sold two, 10 of the 125 calls here as part of the calendar spread or a diagonal spread that I mentioned in my previous video. I'm still going to be holding this. I think solar ETFs and green energy stocks in general are going to do really well this year with Biden coming into presidency. ICLN is another ETF that I have calls on for April. I think they are going to do really well. I also posted uh, about uh, Walgreens. I think Walgreens is, might do pretty well this year, and I, I got a couple of calls today that are already up 11%. Uh, Walgreens is a relatively slow mover. That's why I didn't go too far out of the money, even though this doesn't expire till July 16th. And my reason for getting these calls is because you know, you know, Walgreens did have a bit of a run up with the whole vaccine news. Over the last one to three months, we saw this bit of a run up here, but they've cooled off a little bit. But my re real reason for getting into Walgreens this time is because of all the vaccination that's going to happen and Walgreens and CVS can benefit from it with a lot more people coming in, uh, a lot more people having to go there to get their vaccination, okay? So definitely watch it for Walgreens. Don't go too far out of the money because Walgreens is not a big mover, like I said. Give it a lot of time so that it, there's enough time to appreciate and I think these calls can easily go up 100% or even more over the next few months, okay? So those are the two things that I wanted to show you guys. Uh, make sure you're focusing more on ETFs this year and uh, recovery stocks um, as well as stocks that are still beaten down quite a bit. So as I mentioned, restaurant stocks, Boeing has been beaten down a lot. Alibaba has been beaten down a lot. Uh, I think a lot of them are going to start recovering. So just watch out for those. And that's what I'm going to focus on for most of this year. OK, uh, as I mentioned, or actually, I did not mention this, but in my discord, I did post that for 2020 our this portfolio returned 274.8%, which is absolutely crazy. But thing is, that's not really a realistic return to aim for every single year, okay? So it only happens once in five, 10 years possibly when you have that kind of a huge crash or a recession. But for this year, I'm going to play safe. Anything about 20% is gonna be perfect is what I'm going to shoot for. Anything over 20 is just going to be a bonus in my opinion. So be careful guys. We are potentially going to see a correction eventually. Every year you'll see at least a 10% correction in the market. So be prepared for that. Once you see the correction, that would be a more reliable time to start getting calls on individual stocks and not just ETFs. Okay. So that's all I wanted to share with you guys here today. If you enjoyed the video, please do smash that like button, leave a comment below if you have any questions or any other thoughts that you want to share with me. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell, okay? That's the, thanks for watching and until next time.